EasyBib is probably the most popular of the free citation tools, and in this video, I will show you how to use it most efficiently. After you get to EasyBib.com, choose the login option so that EasyBib will save all of your work should you need to switch computers mid-project or come back to edit any of your citations. Once you reach the login page, you can create a new account associated with EasyBib or choose one of the sign-in options. I will select sign-in with Google. I'm already logged into my Google Apps account, so EasyBib is automatically redirecting me. Had I not been signed in, I would have been prompted to sign in with a Gmail account or my at jeffcoschools.us account. Once logged into EasyBib, I'm delivered to the My Projects tab. I can see all of my existing projects. If I select Edit, I am only able to change the name of the project. If I want to add more items, more citations to my bibliography, just use the bibliography option and you will be able to add more items. In this example, I'm going to create a new project. Give your project a specific name, but you do not need to worry about filling in these other fields. And when you're ready, choose the Create button. You scroll down to the bottom of your projects list, you'll see the new project you created, and choose that bibliography link to get started adding items. EasyBib will always default to the Website Citation tab, but if you are citing a book, simply choose the Book tab to get started. You can search for your book by its title or a keyword, but many books, such as Novels for Students, will have numerous different books that will match that title. So I strongly recommend you use the ISBN option. The ISBN is the number above the book's barcode that is actually printed on the cover of the book. It is not the library barcode that we stick on a book so we can check it out to you. It actually has the letters ISBN on it and then a series of numbers. If more than one ISBN number is featured, I typically use the longer of the two, which tends to be 13 digits. In this case, my book only has one ISBN number and it is shorter than 13 digits. Once you type in the ISBN number, choose Cite It. In theory, only one book should match that ISBN number since each book is given a unique ISBN, but you can see I have two results. They are the same book and my habit is typically to select the top option. I will use this one and choose Cite This. Now, EasyBib is a citation helper, but it is not a decision maker. It will help you with your punctuation and putting the commas and colons and all the other formatting in the correct place, but it will not fill in everything 100% correctly. So you need to make sure that what EasyBib has suggested to you is indeed correct. Your first decision is whether or not you are citing the whole book or only a chapter or section of it. If you have referenced numerous citations from various places in the book, use the whole book option. If all of your citations come from just one chapter, you can select that option. In my case, I used a variety of different citations in many locations through the book, so I will choose the whole book. Here's the first error I see EasyBib making. It listed the same author twice, and a quick check on my title page reveals that there is only one author of this book, not two authors with the same name, so I will select Remove for the second author. Title looks correct. There is no volume or edition. This is just one standalone book, so that one I will leave blank, and when I go to Publication Information, that looks correct. I can double check this on the title page. Everything looks good there. And now I just need to choose Create Citation. EasyBib says, hooray, here's your new citation, and there it is properly formatted in MLA format with all of the punctuation and italics and all of the other formatting options done for me. So it looks good. Now I will show you how to cite a website. So here I had defaulted back to the website tab, and it says for me to enter its URL. So I'll go over to this website, which I'll use for this example, and copy its URL. Take that back over to EasyBib and paste that right in this box and choose Cite It. EasyBib will look through the website's code and its HTML tags and try to figure out the information it needs to create a citation. However, web designers code things in a variety of ways and it's very likely that the information EasyBib pulls from the website is not going to be correct. So you really need to double check this. So EasyBib was able to find these items from the website. However, I can tell that the website title is not Mentos Diet Coke Experiment, and the article title and the website title actually appear to be reversed, but this will give me a start and I will edit from there. So I'm gonna choose Continue. 
And now I will carefully select all of the fields EasyBib has pulled in from the website. First, I will double check the source type. That is indeed correct. It was originally published on a website. The article title, let me go look at this website. So the website title is typically in the header across the top and it does not change when you navigate from various pages to other pages on the website. The article title does, however. So if I'm on this page about Mentos Diet Coke, this would be the better article title. If I switch to a different experiment, that page will have a different title. So the article title is what changes as you navigate from page to page. This is indeed the article title and this is the website title. So I'm gonna go back over to EasyBib and I'm going to switch these. So I'll take what EasyBib found as the website title and I will paste that in as the article title and then I'll go over to website title and put in Steve Spangler Science. The publisher or sponsor is quite commonly the same group or organization that the website is titled after. But I'll go over to the website just to make sure. So Steve Spangler Science is the title of the website, and if I scroll down to the bottom, I can typically find some information about the corporation that sponsors it. So perhaps this website would have been sponsored or published by the National Science Foundation. It is not. I can tell from the copyright at the information at the bottom of the page that the copyright is owned by Steve Spangler Science, which is probably the company he has named after himself. If you don't see this kind of information at the bottom of the page, look on the About Us page to see who is the larger group or company that is responsible for publishing this web page. In my case, it is the same group that the website is titled after, and so I will just copy Steve Spangler Science and paste that in also as the publisher or sponsor of the site. The URL is exactly what I gave to EasyBib earlier, so I will leave that. Current MLA formatting guides say to leave the URL out of your citation, but some teachers do like it. If your teacher would like the MLA citation to include the URL link to the website, change this from no to yes. Finding the date that the article was published on the website can be a challenge. I will go back to the Steve Spangler site. It is typically listed at the bottom. I see copyright 2013. And I will also check at the beginning of the article to see if there were any more specific date listed. There is not, so I will go back to EasyBib and I will type in 2013. I cannot put in a month or a day because that information was not provided to me by the website. The date accessed is when you visit to the website for your research purposes. You may visit the site numerous times, so it's customary to provide the date you first accessed it. In my case, that date is today, which EasyBib has filled in for me. When you have double checked all of the fields, choose the Create Citation option. Hooray, here's my new citation. I can see EasyBib is alphabetizing my entries as I go. And finally, the majority of you should and will use a reputable research database for your project, and you'll see database is one of the options here. If you choose this option, though, you're going to, in most cases, create a lot of extra work for yourself. EasyBib is going to walk you through a variety of questions that ask you what kind of database you're citing and ask you to fill in all these blanks. But most of all of our databases already provide a citation for you. So if I go over to the Literature Resource Center, which is one of the databases that most of you have used, and scroll down to the bottom of the article that I am using in my research, at the very end, I will see the source citation in ML format. All I need to do is copy this, take it over to EasyBib, and instead of recreating it using the database prompts, I can go to the All 59 Options tab and choose Write or Paste Citation. This brings up a text box and I just need to paste in what I copied from the database and then choose the Create Citation option. For many databases, that information on the MLA citation is at the very end of the article. However, in other databases like Academic Search Premier, you'll see options along the left or the right that direct you to the citation. So over on the right, I can see the Cite option, which pulls up a variety of citation options. And I just need to scroll down to MLA and again, copy and paste this into EasyBip using that All 59 Options tab. Once you have finished adding all of your resources to your project, you now need to export it so that you can turn it in. If you choose the Export button, you'll see you have an option to print it as a Word document. When you select that option, it actually redirects you to a page to download the file in MS Word format. Probably the most common way that students export their bibliographies is to choose Export and they save it to their Google Docs.
You'll be redirected to your Google Docs. You will often have to grant permission one more time here for EasyVib to talk to your Google Docs. And then you will get a message that says your file was successfully uploaded and it will give you a hyperlink to go directly to that document. So I'm going to select that option. Here is my works cited page in my Google Docs. It has been added to my Google Drive. If I wish to rename it, I just need to select the title that EasyBib has pre-generated and I can change that. I'll stick with this and just choose OK. And of course, since this is a Google Doc, it's completely editable as well. So that's how you use EasyBib to create masterful MLA works cited pages. If you have any questions about that, you know where to find me.